Hi, I'm Wendy So from San Francisco. I am the speaker chair for the Mycological Society of San Francisco. And I'm Sinclair Phillip, co-proprietor of the Sioux Harbor House and mushroom foray organizer. Well, yesterday we had an absolutely phenomenal day. The weather was beautiful. We had very, very good group leaders who were quite a lot out of the ordinary in that they were not all scientists. A lot of them were really just practical foragers with a very good knowledge of what is edible in the woods, including some commercial foragers. So we had a very good group of people. We had beautiful sites. We, we, we were near rivers. We were near a, a mountain lake. We went into some beautiful hemlock forests, saw a little bit of spruce, went into pine forests. We found porcinis. We found the pig's ear. We found lots of chanterelles. We found puffballs. We found hedgehog mushrooms. We found probably at least 25 different kinds of very beautiful edible mushrooms in prime condition. I flew in here um, on Saturday just particularly for this event um, sponsored by Sinclair and the Sioux Harbor House. I met a lot of slow foods folks as well as um, really, really interesting mushroom forager and just people who are interested in coming to Mushroom. And one of the fellow who was part of leading the forum was Eric uh, Whitehead. Whitehead. And he is um, selling mushrooms in the business and he's a really, really good forager. And he had great stories to tell and what he, what he does for a living. And I've always kind of romanticized <laughs> mushroom foraging, but actually it's really, really hard work. And he shows some clips where they're covered in sweat and having mosquito bites and being out there in the woods. It's definitely um, an eye-opening experience. And he was um, very, very fun, very, very knowledgeable experts here. And the, the trip out um, was really nice as well. It was beautiful weather. I came out on Saturday and it was pouring. And then all of a sudden, because we were mushroom hunting, on Sunday, the sun came up. And we had about 50 people, but we have about five group leaders that separated, uh, separated out and looking at different habitats. I was lucky enough to be in the Porcini group with Sinclair. <laughs> And we were in a uh, hemlock forest where a lot of a lot of trees there that I didn't because in in our region the hemlock forest is not really we don't have a lot of hemlock we have a few hemlocks but the things that we find are very different and where we find our porcinis near the lodgepole pines and up in a higher elevation and and when there's no cedar so that's the area where we find our porcini so it was really great to see another habitat that has a lot of porcini mushrooms growing. And I remember seeing one stump, which was my um, first porcini sighting of myself. Everyone was finding porcinis around me, and I was the one that hadn't found them yet. And then there was one stump right in front of me, it's a, um, um, a dead tree stump. But, you know, obviously there's hemlocks all around, and near the stump was four different types of mushrooms growing. There was next to it, and I got a picture of this too, I don't know, I'll send it to you. <laughs> There's a, um, a, a porcini about this size growing near the stump, and then deer mushroom growing on the side of the stump, and then there's the Lacterius deliciosus growing out on the wood. <laughs> <laughs> the stump of the four mushroom was fantastic. There were four kinds of mushroom, I think, of which three of them are edible, and the, the setting was surreal. We, we were uh, time constrained but otherwise I think I could spend another three hours in the forest. But everywhere you look were um, mushrooms, edible and non-edible kinds, and everyone was so excited you can see the excitement in their eyes. And just thought, just when I thought it was um, one of the best day of the year for me visiting here, I had this really, really fantastic dinner from the Sioux Harbor House that uh, Robin Jackson had put together. This, this is actually his handwritten notes as he was creating and planning our meal. So this is a four course meal that just um, was phenomenal. Last night we did a slow food mushroom event and it was a, a dinner where we had four courses of everything mushroom that we could possibly fit in there. I went out a few days beforehand and foraged for a handful of different wild mushrooms. Got very lucky and had a fantastic day. Ended up finding some king bolitas or porcini and the very first of, as far as I know, the Vancouver Island Pine or Matsutake mushroom. And I don't know what Robin did to the dishes, but I could still, the mushroom were done perfectly. It wasn't overdone or underdone, but you can still really taste the flavors of the mushroom. And I think one of my favorite yesterday, if I had to pick one to, 
you know, indulge in again. It's probably the the first co the first course with the soup. So he made a um, uh, matsutake soup with uh, uh, I guess it's a salted egg with sea salt from a uh, soup harbor here, and uh, the the broth is really flavorful with mushroom. As I learned later to, after talking with him, how he made it, he just shaved the the matsutake onto the cup and then pour the broth over it so it's just done very minimally so you can really taste the flavor of the mushroom and infusing into the soup was really good and that that was um, uh, one of the the soup that's surrounded by a plating of multitude of seven types of mushrooms and and just really sampling all the mushrooms around the plate I think there was um, uh, porcinis and chanterelles and uh, um, mer admirable bullet that was on the plate and then there uh, were yellow foots and there's just seven kinds I don't remember all of them but they can really taste it from flavors and if you want you can dunk it in the soup and add a little bit of the um, pine mushroom flavor or just eat it plain and I think that dish was really was kind of to me summarizes our forage of the day because that's all the mushrooms that we had put together. I have much more to say than what Wendy said and, but um, yeah I would agree that that the two outstanding dishes for me were the the the, the first dish with with the um, the pine mushroom broth, and I love the idea of picking and choosing which ones you wanted to throw into the broth to add a little more flavor or to just make the flavor come out on those mushrooms, and and also the morels that we had in that in that third dish, I guess it was. Uh, I love the, the playfulness of the making the polenta and mascarpone um, look like the stipe of the mushroom. It took me a minute to even see what I was eating and, 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 and really taste it, but it was, it was just a fantastic dish. And I've been to, um, I've been to a lot of different uh, fungus fair and um, camps in California as well, um, different ones, and I would, you know, go again to, to explore my horizon, but thus far, this is the best mushroom meal that I have, so I really had a good time, so thank you, Sinclair, for hosting it. Thank you so much for coming all that way to enjoy this 4 meal with us. It was really, truly incredible. It far surpassed my expectations, there's no question about that. I think the greatest joy in living in southern Vancouver Island is being able to go out and forage for these unique ingredients and wild herbs. But um, there are such an abundance of wild mushrooms just in this area this time of year that you can put together a huge array of different flavors and textures for the palate. Just in one menu we ended up getting about 15 different varieties of wild mushrooms that myself and other foragers have all provided for us. But people really need to understand that the unique qualities of each mushroom. It's not just something like the store-bought whites or porcini, or excuse me, store-bought white mushrooms or the portobellos that you would find in most restaurants. Each mushroom has a very unique flavor, a very unique texture, and a story behind it. Under which tree it grows, or what its symbiont relationships are with the forest. It's really a, a unique ingredient to be able to use. And for me, the funnest part is being able to do a, a grand dinner like this where Every course was just studded with so many different flavors of mushroom. Our dinner was amazing. It was a really fantastic dinner. Um, and very... was there a standout dish, something you remember that you liked? Oh, standout dish. I don't know. They were, they were all uh, so good. Perhaps dessert, just because <laughs> it's uh, not something that you, you think of with mushrooms. Um, That's right, the candy cap ice cream, and then the meringues and the shea, I thought that was cute. The it was a very sweet shea, touch, yes, yes. So we have the dessert that our pastry chef, uh, Matthias Conradi, actually drew. So you have, uh, you're going to have Soon, the kombucha squash pie topped with tuberous begonia mousse, glazed with bergamot and Japanese plum cherry, served with squash puree, candy cap mushroom ice cream, candy cap mushroom jelly, 
meringue mushroom, and candied chanterelle. Bon appétit. And what's amazing is everything here is like the local ingredients and they will be able to put it in something so exquisite that you, you don't have to get it from um, an outsider, you know, imported or anything else. It's just phenomenal. So I had, I think it was the best meal of the year and the best mushroom meal that I've ever had. I have to thank people for wanting to come and enjoy something like this, but in a restaurant where you can, you can actually focus on wild ingredients and wild herbs and wild mushrooms and things, it's neat that people have the, the palate to be able to come and just want to explore and explore what food is on your plate and kind of get to learn a little bit of the history and background behind it.